what is up, friends? I have literally innumerable videos I want to plan and organize and present to you, but I'm kind of stuck in this loop of just wanting to get back to more of the impromptu stuff, um, or more I should say, I keep having these impromptu ideas and putting the cart before the horse a little bit to sh share with you the impromptu versus the organized layout. But I've been meaning to update um, on some foot strengthening progress I have. So some of the videos I have not posted from last year are basically just, <laughs> you know, in the moment, half-baked, me exploring my feet in a foot strengthening regimen that I've created that I honestly think is very effective. And I think everyone should be doing it instead of counting marbles and uh, fucking toe yoga nonsense. Uh, yeah, I have so many things to say about that. Um, <laughs> sidebar on it. You know, Peter Atia recently posted about doing like toe yoga and how to like do the toe yoga. And I'm like, this man knows how important grip strength is. He trains his grip strength. He does finger pull-ups to train his fucking grip strength in addition to other things. Grip strength in your hands and grip strength in your feet are not such a far, you know, abstraction from each other. You would think he would understand that if you want to strengthen your feet, you got to squeeze them like you're gripping something. You got to squeeze your feet and you got to strengthen the muscles in your feet for the endurance and the loading, the heavy lifting that you would want to be able to do finger pull-ups, right? Like, obviously. And instead, we got people doing like, no, just, just do this little like drill, just like, you know. Just make sure you can articulate the toes and you're good. Like, these are the ones you walk on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I'm not trying to troll Peter Atia. I love him. But I actually am just like, I really think he would appreciate this concept. And I don't understand how it hasn't occurred to him because he's like a thousand times smarter than me. And his trainer, Beth Lewis, is a lot more experienced than me. So I don't know why it's lost on them, friends. But one day my people will get in touch with his people, right? <laughs> Okay, so back to today. So one of the things that I discovered um, in strengthening my feet is that, you know, my right foot is much more coordinated, it's more dominant, and it's been able to sort of lead the way for my left foot. And a big thing holding my feet back in their overall strength was being able to activate what we're going to call like the lateral side of the foot muscles. It's the equivalent of the lateral side of your palm, which asked Peter Atia. He actually was doing an interview and someone was like, yeah, that pinky strength is key, right? The pinky strength is key. Yeah. And in the hand, it's because the pinky and half of the ring finger go to your ulnar nerve. That's half the nerve innervation of your hand is occupied by that prime real estate. It's not just about the opposable thumb. Okay. Right. It's more than that. Try to squeeze, make a fist with your hand, leave your pinky and ring finger out. And you're like, yeah, I got no power. Duh. Okay. So same thing essentially happens in the feet. And I'll, I'll, I'll say that a million times and it'll drive people that watch all my videos crazy, but I need to make sure that people understand that. So the reason I'm saying this is because on the right foot, I was very quickly easy to get good activation of all the metatarsals. And what I'm showing you here, although I'm not really ratcheting it out on my foot really hard, is that those knuckles are raised, right? The metatarsal heads are, you can almost see they're a little bit uh, pushed up. And at the first phalangeal bone, right? That first bone is headed downward. It's not inverted. Now, on my left foot, I'm kind of jumping ahead because this has been a learning, a process that I've, you know, discovering and exploring and banging my head against this concrete um, with this foot. But my left metatarsal in particular on this foot has been a real obstacle to me strengthening the lateral edge of this, of this leg, right, for this foot. And part of the reason is because it is more hammered. We'll talk about it in a minute. It's a more hammered toe, or at least it was originally before I've, <laughs> before I really started um, getting ahead of this, it was one of the most hammered toes. And my left foot in particular, all these digits were just a hot mess. Like they were just like, psh, whatever. Okay. And I couldn't straighten them. I, I couldn't, it was a mess. Okay. So it's still kind of a mess to be honest, but um, not nearly as bad as it was. And so what I want to show you about this page, there's a couple, there's another page and this is um, Dr. Thomas Schaud's, you know, masterpiece, uh, Human Locomotion. It's a super important book if you study gait, if you care about human movement. Um, it's not the end-all be-all, friends. It's got some stuff that I want to <laughs> revise for Dr. Michaud, but um, I'm between Dr. Michaud and Dr. T, I'm really getting ahead of myself today. Anyway, what I want to show you, this is the demonstration of a hammered toe, right? The side view of a hammered toe. And 
it, you know, you can go to page 170 in the book and have a look for yourself. But just to get the gist, the key thing I want you to look at is the muscle and the tendon being indicated by C right there. And that little dot above my index finger is the axis of rotation. Uh, well, uh, that's not really the right word I want to use, but basically that is the axis around which we would like we would like that tendon to wrap so that when this muscle pulls, it presses this digit, or I'm sorry, not digit is not the right word, but the first bone down, right? This is your short flexor. We want it to press it down, flat, like that. It goes under that little spot, that axis of rotation, we'll call it, and then it pulls that first bone down so that when you go to press your feet into the floor, they don't hammer. But once they've hammered, we can create like a, I don't want to say permanent, but Dr. Michaud asserts that it's basically permanent. And I think a lot of podiatrists would tell you that as well. We have this permanent hammering, de, you know, malfunction, right? Because the bone structure then, it's chicken and egg, chicken and egg. What originally, right, was that those muscles weren't pulling the bone. Then they adapt. The bone goes up here. Now when the muscle tries to pull, it's pulling over that axis. So it just hammers more. It's easier for me to show you with my hand where I have better dexterity, right? But this was happening in my foot. So what I wanted was what I call in my classes play piano. I wanted to push, I obviously don't play piano and that's not what we do our hands with, but I wanted to push straight down from the base of the finger. I wanted to push down from the base of the toe. I didn't want to count marbles or, or crunch my toe off the ground. See how that direction is different of that first bone. So that is what happens when you have a hammered toe, you lose the ability to activate that. You can activate that muscle, but it does something different. It does something corrupted in your foot, which fucking sucks. <laughs> I have a note over here that says, my left foot. Because when I first read this, I was like, yeah, huh? that makes a lot of sense. Because I would sit here and I would try to make my right and left foot do the same things, and I would get a very different outcome. Okay, what I'm here to tell you, I'm sorry for the wind and the pages, if it's not laundry noise and construction, it's, you know. Anyway, what I wanna tell you, oh, <laughs> or my amazing videography skills, is that while I still don't have this activation as good as on the other side, right, I can't activate it as well, I have definitely made progress. It is not a foregone conclusion, friends. If you have <laughs> the relentless dedication that I have, <laughs> okay, the determination, dedication, the obsession, if you're willing to put in the time, I, I don't want to tell you can create miracles, but honestly, the progress I've made in this foot, I don't have to get to perfection to feel a massive difference in this foot. Just, now, I've kind of positioned it that way. I've cheated a little, which is part of how you can start to help your body find the muscles and pull along the correct alignment. But even when I let this go, you know, I can't demonstrate very easily in this video with camera like this and whatnot, but I'm ha I will be telling you more. Like you can see there, I'm able to maintain that. Now, what I'm maintaining, what I'm feeling as I do that is that I, uh, I'm feeling all, it's like almost the equivalent of that fist, right? If you make the fist and you squeeze the pinky finger and the ring finger and you get all the activation down the lateral side of the hand, I'm able to feel that down the lateral side of my foot, right? It's a, it's a proxy, but that's, you know, it's not totally equivalent, but that's a good way to, to imagine it. Because if you can't feel that right now, you need something to sort of anchor your brain what sensation you're aiming for. Okay, so you want to feel that you can lift up. You can lift up that side of the foot. You can create an arch almost on that side of the foot the same way as we would create an arch here. Now, I'm don't pay attention to what I'm doing with my foot right now. I'm just sort of, just let me talk you through it because this isn't like the perfect form for how you practice this, but it's, it's fine, okay? But I want you to see, I'm just trying to make my foot make a shape that exaggerates that for you, that I'm getting like, a lift on this side in addition to on this side. Now the combined effect of getting lift here and lift here is that I also can support the all-important transverse arch and I think you can see that there's a little, um, it's raised in the middle, right? So between what you would call like my index toe and my middle toe, right? It's a little bit lifted there. I have a whole story about how that was a massive breakthrough for me on this foot. Uh, I don't want to segue too far so let me just, or digress too far, so let me just, just hang on. But it makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference in the way the foot activates to be able to keep that transverse arch integrity and you're not bottoming out. Plant, you know, if you have what ha you've been told, you have a plantar's ward, you have a corn in the middle of your foot, super, pr you know, tender pressure points on the sole of the foot, 
I told you I wasn't going to digress, but I just wanted to take a minute while we're here because who knows when I'll make the video. Can you even see? You can't even freaking see it anymore, guys. You can't even freaking see it. But I used to have, um, like, what was I was told it was a planner's wart right underneath my ring finger. I'm trying to put it in the best light I can. I have a video when you can see it better, but it's basically totally gone. Yep, basically totally gone. When I was a young, gosh, like a young teenager, young, like 14, 15, I had one of these surgically fucking removed. It hurt so bad and it just came back. And it wasn't a viral wart. It was a corn. It was an invert, you know, I can't remember, they have a specific name, but it's like an inverted callus, right? That hurts like a son of a gun because it presses between the metatarsals where the nerves run. It's like having a cattle prod in the bottom of your foot. Not fun. Guess what? With strengthening my feet and being able to create that arch, and now you can see that area when I, I'm not doing anything crazy with my foot. I'm just gently activating the muscles that I showed you here. Just gently activating those muscles. Nothing crazy, nothing crazy, just gently activating them. It's creating lift here as opposed to a bottoming out depression there. No more corn, no more pain. Tch, magic, right? Magic, magic. Anyway, so creating that is an important part of your foot function. Whether or not you have one of those darn corns to remind you of it, let you know, it's an important part of your foot function. So you need a strong lateral arch, a strong medial arch in for a lot, a lot of reasons, like we need to be able to use, a lot of our strength comes from the outer edge of that foot, just like in your grip strength. You can't leave the pinky out, you have no strength in the hand. It disables, it compromises the rest of the fingers. I don't care how, th how strong these two are, if the pinky is not in the game, you do not have the hand strength. Same with the foot. So you have to be able to get some activation there, and that's why the hammering of these toes is such a, a setback. Um, for people trying to strengthen their feet. So if you have hammering in those toes, I'm here to tell you part of why you're going to really have to overcome as best you can. Don't give up. You might be told there's nothing you can do about it. And honestly, your hammering in your toes might be more permanent than mine. Or you just might have other th reasons why in your body you can't overcome it. Okay? So I don't want to gaslight. But I am here to tell you that I personally have had big improvement. And I would not tell you that if it were not true. And I will show you, eventually I'm going to post the videos of the real time when I'm sitting there staring at my damn foot, struggling, trying to do like a Jedi mind trick to get the toes to move the way I want them to and being completely frustrated, right? So I will show you that. You'll see the, this is like a year long process. I started getting flickers of benefit on that toe um, maybe two months ago or so, a couple months ago. Ugh, time flies, so it's probably been more than two months. But it was at least a year of dedicated, like that was my main project. You know, I would strengthen my feet in all the ways, right? Always doing like global strengthening. But then I would spend extra time triaging that one area of my foot to try to get it up to speed with my right foot because I knew what a difference it was making for my right foot. So, not, so being realistic, it was a year of daily effort and I do have video documenting when I could not do it and I'm sitting there struggling. And so I'm here to tell you, Acha's here to report back. He's like, yeah, we're so happy about it. <laughs> Let's go. Um, that you can, or that I've made improvements. I don't want to say you can. I'm telling you I've made improvements. And that therefore, uh, and also, even if I couldn't see that digit, you know, articulating the way I am more, uh, am more able to, I was already feeling improvements in the foot strength. So it's not just that you need to perfect the structure. The form and the function go together, right? So the foot will function better when the form is more cooperative. But you, with each incremental improvement in the form, even if there's not, I know the video, even if there's not, um, you know, concrete, visible, detectable evidence on the outside, you'll be able to feel it. So do work at it. Do work at it. And at least now, you know, like when I saw that picture from the book, um, and there's another picture I want to show you. I'll, I'll put a page link below because I think there's a better close-up of, uh, of the issue. Um, when I saw that, it helped me focus my brain on the problem, right? Rather than just staring at my foot. And I'll tell you some of the other things that I did. Like, here, just for, for example, I instead of just feeling like, oh, I want to push that knuckle up, I started thinking about squeezing those toes together, and that helped me get the activation. So that's a sidebar. We'll look... I will go deep into the things I do to strengthen my feet, okay? Um, but 
just so you know, like I was able to make some changes, but it helped to know, to have my mind have a visual to wrap around to be like, that's what's going on there. That's why I can't get that foot to not hammer that way. That's what that depression of that knuckle versus the uh, lifting of the knuckle, the depression, the permanent depression of the knuckle, even when I tried to, you know, curl my toe there to lift it or press down into the toe to lift it. Um, that's what that was the result of. So it makes a big difference just to be able to get the visual and hopefully to have someone talk you through it. All right, I'm going to post this. Um, again, putting the cart before the horse. I got a lot of content for you that is more organized. I swear to God, uh, if I can just get my shit together. But in the meantime, I hope this is a good teaser and not just a teaser. I hope it's actually useful.